What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I'm Gold Penny on the new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the all new 2022 Volkswagen Taos courtesy of Hanover Volkswagen in Hanover PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so wanted to check this one out today because of course this is an all new model from Volkswagen for the 2022 model year and a new engine from Volkswagen actually as well included on this one. And so the Taos essentially slots in just below the Tiguan as far as size goes. And this one will be competing with other SUVs including the Mazda CX-30, Honda HRV, and Toyota CHR. In case you were looking for some comparison there but essentially in this video I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality exhaust clip sound system all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there will be a few different trim levels for the 2022 Taos first one being the S starting at $22,995 SE which is the one we have today starting at $26,000 and SEL starting at $29,000 even and by the way that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration you can add all wheel drive to any of those trim levels simply just add $1,555 to any of those trims then but regardless of trim level that you go with though the power plant on this one is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, which again is a brand new engine from Volkswagen for the 2022 Taos. This one puts out 158 horsepower, 184 pound feet of torque, sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic for the front wheel drive, but a seven speed dual clutch then for the all wheel drive. So a little bit different transmission setup there, depending upon which setup that you go with, but zero to 60 time, approximately 7.8 eight seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 28 in the city, 36 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 25 in the city, 32 then on the highway for the all wheel drive. But so now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's have some fun here. Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the Taos to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2022 Volkswagen Taos here up to speed. All right, so here we go in three, two, one. little bit of turbo lag there but dang it's pulling now yeah it's not too bad it shouldn't have any issues emerging onto the highway again there was a little bit of turbo lag there at the beginning this is a turbocharged four-cylinder after all you don't always get that but you do get a little bit of it here but not a horrible thing definitely no issues emerging onto the highway but to go along with that as always braking is equally important and so as you can imagine four-wheel disc brakes do indeed come standard here on the Taos as far as that braking feel goes Definitely no issues there. It feels perfectly fine. I would say even on the firmer side, which is kind of cool. A lot of times with SUVs, you get kind of a soft braking feel, but I don't feel that here with this one. So I do like that. But touching then on suspension and handling, up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, it's going to differ whether or not you go with the front wheel drive or the all wheel drive. If you go with the front wheel drive, you're gonna get a torsen beam rear axle. If you go with the all wheel drive, you're gonna get an independent multi-link rear suspension. Essentially what that means is if you go with the all wheel drive, you're not only going to get a slightly smoother ride, but also better handling with that one as well. And so overall, as far as ride quality goes, it is a compact SUV. So we'll say you can feel a decent amount of the road. It's to be expected though with really any compact SUV, minus some luxury ones, I guess you could say, but really you can feel a decent amount of the road and the roads are pretty punishing here in Pennsylvania quite honestly so did want to mention that as far as steering feel goes it is on the looser side I will say that I uh, wouldn't have minded a little bit firmer of a steering feel but it is to be expected with a compact SUV like this and as far as cabin noise goes that is actually quite good I'm not getting a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin you guys could probably tell I am driving right now there isn't a whole lot of wind noise or road noise for that matter really so definitely no issues with the cabin noise I'll definitely give it that but so then as far as visibility goes I can see perfectly fine out the back there's no sloped roof line or anything impeding visibility so that is certainly on point and rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard on the SEL trim level only essentially what that is is whenever the Taos detects any kind of Mr. Rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. Just one last thing you got to worry about. So that's a pretty cool safety feature in itself. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Volkswagen Taos. 
All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Volkswagen Taos, finished in deep black pearl. Eight different color options, by the way, in case anybody was curious. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. LED headlights actually do come standard across the board for every single trim level. You definitely don't always get that, so I want to emphasize that. Automatic feature, of course, coming with that, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard now the headlight housings are going to differ slightly amongst the trim levels so i want to emphasize that too for example you will find reflector style lighting if you were to go with the s or se trims whereas if you were to go with that sel you will find projector style headlights so a little bit different there little better illumination with the sel obviously so we do want to mention that but then down to the sides you will find front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination so a little better aerodynamics there led lit center horizontal bar in the front grille is only going to come with the sel trim level otherwise it's going to be finished in matte black across the center there to the left and the right of the volkswagen emblem you guys can see that and i did want to mention one more thing with that sel trim you will find adaptive front lighting system meaning when you're going around the bend at night those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend it's a little better safety feature there as well but that about rounds out the front of this one let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the house all right so now since we are around to the side of this one black roof rails come standard with the s trim level however se and sel are going to give you silver roof rails rear privacy glass coming standard with the se and sel trims meaning you do not get that rear privacy glass with the s so wanted to mention that black window surrounds coming with the S. However, you will find silver belt line molding with the SE and SEL trims. All trim levels, however, are going to get those silver front fender accents that say Taos in the middle of them, which is a pretty cool little added feature there. Matte black side skirts are going to come standard on all trim levels, but I will say even though they're matte black, they look dang good with our black exterior. You really can't even tell that they're matte black. So I'm not a big fan of the matte black side skirts, but it does look pretty good with the black exterior. I will say that. But then take a look at the side mirrors. They are power adjustable gloss black side mirrors with the S body colored with the se and sel trims and then heated for the se and sel as well and then taking a look down at the wheel configuration 17 inch alloys with the s 18 inch alloys then for the se and sel and by the way there are unique designs for those two se and sel trims as well in case you were curious but that about rounds out the side of this one. Let's go ahead and make our way now to the back of it. It's open now since we are around to the back. Body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that rear window wiper. LED tail lights actually come standard for all trim levels. So wanted to emphasize that. It's another one of those things you don't always get. Of course, Taos lettering spelled out horizontally towards the bottom portion of that rear tailgate. That is pretty cool. Trim level badging also found in the corner there. But the one thing... I never like about Volkswagen and Audi for that matter is the fake exhaust outlets. You guys see that chrome trim on both corners there at the bottom? That of course is fake. Those aren't the actual exhaust outlets, but there is a single exhaust outlet that is tucked away. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around back of the Taos, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate for all trim levels. There is a button on the key fob to unlock it. There is also, of course, a button on the lift gate itself to go ahead then and open it up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 28 cubic feet behind that second row. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, bumping that up to an even 66 cubic feet. And so when you're comparing that 66 cubic feet to the competitors in this segment, you're going to find the Hyundai Kona coming in at 45.8 cubic feet or the Mazda CX-3, for example, coming in at 45.2 cubic feet. So that's right around the average. So 66, it's almost a class up almost, but not really because it's all at the same price point. So 66 cubic feet for the Taos is the very best. So I just wanted to emphasize emphasize that but in that cargo area you will find cargo lighting there are some grocery bag hooks along with one massive grocery bag hook that was pretty cool to see and some tie down anchors back there as well if you look underneath the cargo floor you're going to find a spare tire under there in case you were curious but then making our way to the rear legroom that comes in at 37.9 inches so for reference 
I am an even six feet tall. I have plenty of space back there. Again, if you were comparing this one to some of the competition, the Hyundai Kona comes in at 34.6 inches, Mazda CX-30, 36.3, so 37.9 here in our Taos. Again, winning it when it comes to overall space, really. That's what I'm kind of emphasizing. That's where the Taos is really good at when you compare it to the competitors. But rear center armrest with cup holders also coming standard back there. There is some rear ventilation and there is one single phone charging port. Not a USB charging port, not a 12 volt power outlet, but your standard phone charging port can be found back there as well. But then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the S. Eight-way power driver's seat with power lumbar coming with the SE and SEL trims. Cloud tech surfaces coming with the SE. That is currently what we have today. It's what you guys are looking at. Heated front seats coming with the SE trim level as well. And then full leather seating for the SEL. But I will say because of that lumbar support, because of our power adjustable seats, I do actually like the seating. It is plenty comfortable, so I can certainly see myself taking a long road trip in this thing. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leatherette wrapped for the SE and SEL trims and then heated if you were to go at that SEL trim level. So I did want to mention that. Then make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key. You have your Volkswagen logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch, the times two button, that is actually going to be a remote start that comes standard on the SE and SEL trims only. And there is a push button start, of course, that comes standard on all trim levels. And so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just in front of the shifter there. Now here is where it really gets good for the Taos. When it comes to the gauges, there is a Volkswagen digital cockpit that comes standard for every single trim level. You never get that on the bottom trim level. So there's a full digital gauge cluster. It's kind of one of my things. I love digital gauges right now. A lot of manufacturers are starting to do it. And when they do do it, it looks dang good as it does here in our towel. So even the bottom trim level is gonna get that. I love that. And of course you can adjust what is on those digital gauges by using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side then of the steering wheel. Displays of course a massive digital readout front and center, time of the day, outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, average miles per gallon, the list goes on. So pretty much everything you could possibly want up on that digital gauge cluster. But then making our way to overall interior quality, a panoramic sunroof is going to be optional. I wanted to mention it because we do have that option. It goes for $1,200, by the way. Auto dimming rear view mirror is going to come with the SEL. Dual zone climate control coming with the SEL. Ambient lighting, again, coming with the SEL. Wireless phone charger coming with the SEL. Some of these things though, I will say are optional on our SE, like the wireless phone charger. We do have that there. It's located just in front of the shifter. But overall, when it comes to interior quality, the SEL trim is really where you're going to want to be at. So just wanted to mention that. But overall, I do like the contrast colors that Volkswagen has used in this one. We do have the dark color. We have the lighter gray color. And then we have a blue color, which is my favorite, because that blue and dark color ties in perfectly with the digital gauge cluster. I think that's why they did it. A lot of manufacturers will use red, but then have blue gauges. So Volkswagen, I think, realized if we're going to have blue gauges, we might as well have some blue accents on the interior. And it looks dang good because of that. So well thought out Volkswagen, I do like that. Again, just in front of the shifter, you have two phone charging ports, 12 volt power outlet, and that wireless phone charger. Just to the left of the shifter, you do have an electromechanical parking brake. Behind that, you have your dual cup holders, and within the center armrest, actually a pretty deep amount of storage within there. So kind of impressed with that, but overall, when it comes to interior quality, wouldn't have minded some USB charging ports. The phone charging ports are okay, and I guess you could always get one of those cables that converts the phone charger to a USB charger, but if I were to try to charge up my battery right now, I am not able to because it only has USB, and there's no USB charging ports, but anyways, that's my own personal problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tech screen right here. 6.5 inch color touchscreen display coming with the S trim level. However, if you were to go with the SE or SEL, that does bump up to an eight inch color touchscreen display. That's what you guys are currently looking at. Bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, also standard for all trim levels factory navigation system coming with the SEL only. Again, you don't really need it though because Android Auto, Apple CarPlay after all will give you navigation up on that screen anyways. So in addition to that, you can also check out weather information up there. You can check out fuel information if you wanted to. You could check out climate control settings. One thing before we get to the radio information here, I noticed whenever you put your hand just maybe within four inches of that screen, a little hand icon pops up in the lower right hand corner and it pulls up all of the buttons and everything that you can actually touch. And then when you pull your hand away, 
everything goes away. That's kind of cool. I'd never seen that before. So well done Volkswagen there. I like that. But anyways, radio information, of course, is up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, six speakers for the S and SE trims and then eight speaker beat sound system for the SEL. So you guys know what that means. We do have the six speaker sound system here with us today. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. See, we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one. not bad for a six speaker sound system of course didn't blow me away or anything it's six speakers but it's not bad it does the trick it'll get the job done here in our house but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that entertainment screen is when you do put this one in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board and it actually does take up the whole screen that doesn't always happen these days so that's pretty cool letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start front side side current airbags do come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but then the sel trim level that is the trim that is going to add all the advanced safety. So that is going to include a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, adaptive cruise control, road sign recognition, high beam control, rear parking sensors, pedestrian monitoring, and lane keep assist as well. And by the way, you can get some of that for the other trims as package option. So I do want to mention that as well. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here to put it in black and white, the area where the Taos really pulls ahead of the competition is its size, of course, for its class, for the same pricing. This thing has the most space in it. So I will say that most rear legroom, most cargo space. So that is definitely where you're going to win with the Taos without a doubt. And pretty good power, actually, for its class as well. Not the quickest thing in the world, of course, but still pretty good power for its class. Very attractive styling. I definitely love the look. I think it looks great all blacked out as well, especially because it comes with matte black side skirts, it's a black exterior. It's really going to make this one look very good. Ambient lighting is available, although we don't have it today, but I did want to mention that. That's pretty cool. I like that as well. As far as room for improvement goes, the fake exhaust outlets have got to go. I never like them. I'm not sure anybody actually likes them. If you're going to do it, do it right. And if you're not going to expose the exhaust outlet, that's fine but don't pretend like you're going to that's all i'm saying but anyways also some of that advanced safety that is found on the sel not necessarily all of it but some of it should come on the bottom trim level as well safety really shouldn't always be optional and that's just my personal opinion but anyways that about rounds out this review you guys let me know what you think of the taos in the comments section below feel free to follow me on tiktok at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see short clips of these vehicles before they actually get to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i'll see you guys all in the next video stay gold